the story you are about to read is about suffocation. Psychological suffocation leading to physical suffocation, leading to death. This is a story about how toxic emotional forces in a family, unfolding over decades, slowly extinguished Casey Anthony psychologically and then suddenly extinguished her two-year-old daughter, Kaylee Anthony, physically. Kaylee Anthony was killed by a person who had never lived anything resembling a genuine life, was never really, truly alive at all, and therefore assigned no value to a little girl's life. This transmutation of psychological death into physical death usually occurs without anyone taking notice. The victim's remains are buried, and with them, the true story of why that person was killed. The people who remain behind escape any post-mortem examination. Even if one of them is tried for murder, the truth about the lethal psychological makeup of that person or those surrounding her may never be known. That shall not be the case here. Does the link I suggest between psychological death and physical death surprise you? It shouldn't. One very often causes the other. Though it sometimes takes two generations or three or even more for it to happen. Emotional violence snaking its way through a family tree commonly snaps the newest, most innocent, most exquisitely vulnerable limb. Looking at the corpse of a child, even combing through the physical evidence surrounding her disappearance, can't reveal her real cause of death. Hair samples, DNA, a skull left in the dirt, all fail to tell the tale. But a painstaking examination of the psychological dynamics of those closer to her often will. Few of us would deny that chronic emotional stress can eventually trigger a cardiac arrest, ending a man's life. The stress can act on blood vessels, causing them to clamp down, limiting the oxygen carried to the heart muscle, ultimately destroying that muscle. In some cases, the person doesn't survive. Well, just as people need oxygen to feed their heart muscle, they need emotional oxygen to feed their souls and sustain that core identity we call the self. Emotional oxygen is anything that reassures a person that she is a real individual, worthy of being treated as a complete human being. It includes all the times when others react to her behavior with genuine praise, concern, or even justifiable anger. It includes all those times when others honor her thoughts and feelings, listening to them with real attention, responding to them with real intention, in short, it includes all the ways she is affirmed as a person, rather than treated as a non-person. Emotional oxygen nurtures a person's developing humanity. Mental, physical, or sexual abuse can suck all the emotional oxygen out of a home, psychologically suffocating one or more occupants. So, too, can subtle and toxic forms of communication that demand that one or more family members put themselves to sleep or bury themselves alive, suppressing their core identities until they are, for all intents and purposes, non-existent. It can happen in the dark, under cover of night, as silently as carbon monoxide fills the lungs of children while they sleep. Without enough emotional oxygen, a person will die spiritually. She ends up despising the truth because she despises the true story of her own psychological destruction. She becomes a stranger to her own feelings, then immune to those of others, then hostile to genuine human existence itself. And then she, or more likely someone who is dependent on her, can die physically, whether by suicide, murder, or even through carelessness that leads to an unavoidable accident. In short, a family can be so devoid of emotional oxygen that it eventually becomes incompatible with sustaining human life. The family in which Casey Anthony was raised, into which Kaylee Anthony was born, and in which she died before her third birthday, is such a family.